four points from the last two games. Um, how do you reflect on those two performances? Just move on to Walsall, if I'll be brutally honest. Liam, just move on to Walsall, move on to the next game. Um, the games come thick and fast for everyone. No matter who you are, every team has similar issues, whether it be travelling at the minute, whether it be injuries, suspensions, whatever it may be. You know, the majority of the dice rolls for us all. You know, so whilst we're always looking to learn from previous games, you know, the most important game is the next one. And, you know, for us, it comes no tougher than Walsall on Saturday. Yeah, it's the, uh, it's the, the 10 game marker tomorrow, which everyone always looks at as a, as a first marker, if you like. How do you sort of assess your, your early start to life back in League Two? Hey, man, we assess that start. It's been okay. It's been okay. Probably our only real mishap was uh, Paul Vale away, where we were really disappointing, really, really, probably very, very unlike us. We've had a couple of highs in there, we've had a couple of lows, giving up a couple of goals, possibly at home. So, school report says certainly could do better without a shadow of a doubt, but the signs are promise. So, we're adapting to the league, obviously, everything's new for us. You know, within that, we know we've got good players. We're not stupid, you know, but it's not good players who get success at football clubs it's good teams and that's being a big word to team you know and we're going into a game tomorrow against what I consider a team a really good team and that's obviously they've had the disappointment to Tuesday night which is football you know I think it when you watch the games back it certainly was a game of two halves by the way at half time I think Walsall might have been City at top of the league and it just shows you what can change in football but you know, they're a really good side, they're very well coached, he's doing a fantastic job, Matt. You know, to have them punching where they are, when they certainly wouldn't have the budgets of other teams, that's for sure. You know, and, and, and with it probably a, a tough thing for Walsall's being the fact that everybody speaks really well about them. <laughs> and, it's, and that was after like two or three games, I was getting told how good they are. And I've been really looking forward to meeting them, believe it or not now. But unfortunately for Walsall, that brings a little bit more pressure than they probably had at the start of the year. Because of how well people speak about them and how they're playing as a team and how strong they are. So, you know, we're just really looking forward to the game tomorrow, that's for sure. Yeah, is it a bit dangerous sometimes when you play against a team who have been on the end of a heavy defeat and then you've got them next? Walsall haven't been on the end of anything other than one defeat on Tuesday night. We're talking heavy about... Defeat, ah, listen, it depends how you look at it. I'm sure Matt and his players will have been disappointed. Of course, they will the human beings. But they've actually got nothing to be disappointed about, have they? They'll come here quite vibrant tomorrow. I'm sure, I'm sure they're looking forward to the game. Uh, we are. You know, and I think it'll be a really good League Two encounter, and that's what I enjoy. Yeah, what what type of encounter are you expecting then? It's a good game. Playing against a team very, very well organised, very, very well coached. Like I say, square pegs in square holes, which is always good in football. They've got a style of play, they've certainly got a clear identity, and within that, they're good. You know, they're good, they carry energy, they carry youthfulness, they've got balance. Do you know, everything that I, when I watch a team play, I, I like it. I like Walsall. You know, and, and as I say, credit to them. You know, keep going back to that point. Probably themselves, Wimbledon and Doncaster have probably been spoken about early as the teams that could be the promotion teams. And that's, that's great credit to Matt, isn't it? So they've had the bump. I'm sure they're looking forward to the game tomorrow. Like everyone else, they're going to have a good season. I'm sure they are. And there's going to be bumps and bruises along the way. That's football for us all. You, you go into the game obviously on the back of two good results away from home then um, and you've been been playing well at home but you've been frustrated a few times probably fair to say so just football just, yeah. Liam yeah. it's hard isn't it because I think if we played this our fifth home game tomorrow we've two yeah. three and won one and we've been in the lead three times in the other games and you're always disappointed aren't you but you know it's a long season and I say all the time there's never a prize given out in September and October you know, and everyone will gather momentum. I think you look historically at the league where Stockport had a ridiculously run from a poor start. Doncaster was certainly, I might be wrong, fifth or sixth bottom at Christmas. So it's all there for everyone. I think the most important thing is, you know, what you produce on a regular basis. You know, consistency, which is a massive word for any of us in, as football managers. You know, and I feel the most consistent teams will be the ones who find themselves towards the top end of the table. And I know you don't like to talk about individuals, um, but we've seen Tom Naylor restored back into midfield. Uh, how important do you think that's been? Oh, Tom's just a good player. He's been a major signing for this football club. You know, he's been a, you know, a fan's favourite. 
you know, a staff favourite. I think if you look historically back on Tom Naylor's career, it's probably the same remit at every club he's been at. He's been club captain at every club. And when you get professionals as good as Tom Naylor, you know, with the greatest respect, my job's easy. You know, you don't have to manage these lads, they just do everything properly. And that's credit to Tom, that's credit to how he conducts himself on a daily basis. And we're lucky to have him in terms of his, his adaptability onto a football pitch. You know, he, he's, he can play numerous positions. Probably the way we play with two sitters probably doesn't suit Tom's style of play because Tom's got so much more energy to offer. And, you know, as a late penalty box entry, you know, where he's a goal scorer, he's probably a number eight in the modern day game that people are playing with. So he adapts to everything we want and we're just delighted to have him and we, and we love working with him. So, yeah, big pat on the back for Tom Naylor. That one was, by the way, wasn't it? <laughs> and uh, I know it, it must be difficult to leave some of the some of the lads out who played such a big part last year. You know, Jamie Grimes is I think he's waited a long time to get back in the AFL, and he and he said that he didn't give the best account of himself when he was at Cheltenham, so he was just desperate to play in I, League Two again. I think it, one, it must be so difficult to leave those sorts of players out. Yeah, I, I think one of the the hard parts for managers, Liam, and I think one of the big things I've learned over the my time as managing is is levels for players. You know, and clubs move up a level, you know, and historically it doesn't matter now what the leagues are bringing. You know, you look at Birmingham in League One, for example, you know, yet they were just a relegated team from the championship. You know, the three clubs, Sheffield, United, Burnley and who's the other relegate? Southampton. You know, they all got promoted. Like, uh, sorry, uh, Luton, sorry. Uh, all get promoted on the back of winning so many games, but they go in a Premier League where winning a game is so tough. And I think you're seeing more and more now league tables are, you know, at the top end, if you are promoted, teams historically are finding it more difficult now by stepping up levels. And, and for us all, the hardest part for any manager is changing players and having an overturn in players that have done well for you. You know, we've been lucky, you know, Stockport have gone through it a little bit, haven't they? Wrexham are going through it as they progress through leagues. And I think any team who progresses, it'll always be difficult. We had it with Joe Quigley a month ago where we all love Joe Quigley. You know, and our club now is, is going to be in a period of change where there's other clubs, Walsall, Doncaster, teams are playing. They've had a little bit more continuity, whichever way continuity looks like. And I think continuity is a really good thing. Me, I love partnerships on a pitch. So for our lads, we want to, to come up, be promoted. We've got that promotion. We've got lads in the team now and squad who've helped us do that. You know, and we've got to make sure as we try and progress at a club that we're giving everybody the correct opportunity to play to establish themselves, to stay they can do the level, but also mindful that the club wants to go forward and that can be difficult because it normally means that some fans' favourites, Jeff King, for example, was a massive favourite at our club and he was so popular in the staff room as well. But you move on and clubs don't stand still for anyone, so we're delighted for our players. We've got a really good squad, as I say. You know, everyone's been given an opportunity, more or less. You know, and tomorrow will be no different where there'll be another change or two in the team for sure. And uh, quite a few fans are just asking about John Fleck. I know you don't like to necessarily give away too much, but is, is there anything that you can say on this sort of situation at the John, moment? John's picked up a couple of little niggly injuries at the end of each week. And um, what he's done, he's trained really hard. And what we're feeling that the injuries are more fatigue than actually injuries at the end of a tough week. So ideally what we've done this week, he's trained hard at the beginning of the week. And at the end of the week, we've come off it in relation to making sure that he's now going to be available for Saturdays, which is good, and we can build his, peer, his fitness up over a period of time. So John's been doing, like, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday's really tough, and obviously by the end of Friday, he's been reporting bits of fatigue and tightness, and tightness, which we think is fatigue. Ideally, we've changed that schedule this week, so John's now had a really tough Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. He's had Thursday off, and now he's coming in this morning, fit and available, which is great for us. Fantastic, thank you for that. And um, is there anyone else available? I know that Devon missed out, Harvey and, and Dylan. Yeah. Again, anyone available if you'd like to select them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just in case Matt sadly watches our interviews, he doesn't need to know my team at what time is it, half past nine on a Friday morning. He can yeah. find out at half past one tomorrow. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Just a, a final one on Walsall then. Probably a, a little bit of a surprise package for, for a lot of people in that top three early, early doors. I, I, th um, I think the surprise has gone, 
Liam, I think, um, you know, I would have come into the league this year not knowing anything about Walsall. Yet after four, five, six games, it was probably the most talk about team I'd heard about. So, you know, there's not, there's no hidden secrets for Walsall in the league. Now what they've done is going in front of them. And that's credit to the staff, the players, the manager, without a shadow of a doubt, because they're only getting spoke about because they're very good.